Now, when we're thinking about the sirtuins, they, they, you said something really important that I want to highlight for people. They sense NAD levels. It's not so much the ratio between NAD and NADH, but they're, they're, they're NAD sensors. So when NAD levels are high, the sirtuins can be active. Is that correct? Yeah. And when, when we say the sirtuins are active, that means they're doing their job at the epigenetic, at the genomic level, at the histones. Is that what we mean when we say active? Because the, we've talked about previously, they're moving to the DNA and they're moving you know, away from uh, affecting the histone proteins. When the, when the sirtuins are active with NAD levels being high, they're doing all the roles we just talked about. Is that correct? Right. Right. And, and if they're active, they can carry out DNA repair and gene silencing and controlling FOXO3 uh, without um, what we would say being limiting in their um, activity. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, yeah, so they're, they're always bouncing around the cell. They're moving at 10,000 miles an hour. These aren't right. just you know, like blobs. And the more active they are, the faster they can carry out these functions without getting distracted. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's why when you put in more copies of the gene for SIR2 in yeast and SIRT1 and SIRT6 in mice, the organisms have better DNA repair uh, and they, they live longer. Mm -hmm. So they're a more able to do their thing. So I guess the overarching hypothesis that will take some time to really fully flesh out is if sir 2 ones are more active, can we live longer? Can we live better? Right? Well, yeah, right. Well, they're not the only longevity gene, but right. they're a favorite of mine. They are one of three major types of longevity gene. 